Praise the Lord, beloved of the Most High God. I'm going to title this sermon, Seven Ways to Lose Your Salvation. Uh Uh-oh, here it comes. I knew she was a heretic. I knew she'd lose her mind eventually. Bear with me and hear me out. I think you're going to see that this is just another way of, of looking at the gospel to prove the truth of the word of God to ourselves. You know, I am in the business of free grace and in the business of calming the hearts and minds of believers because there's no greater irritation to me than people who want to run around troubling the saints of God. I don't like it. I know God doesn't like it. He was always telling the disciples to be calm, to fear not, to let not their heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. And then these people want to run around troubling believers and, 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 and have them in fear. And the Bible says that perfect love casts out fear because fear has torment. We are not supposed to walk in fear. And I absolutely despise teachings that will place an ungodly fear in believers' hearts. It's not of God. And I do my best under the power of the Holy Spirit and the unction from the Holy Spirit to share with God's beloved here on YouTube and in other places the peace of God, that it will keep our hearts and our minds through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. And the Bible admonishes us to think on those things which are good and pure and perfect and lovely and of a good report. If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, we're to think on these things. It doesn't say we're supposed to think about things that trouble us. So, beloved, let's take a look at Romans chapter 8 before we examine the seven ways to lose your salvation. And actually, there are more than seven. There are probably a couple of dozen ways that a a person could lose their salvation. And we're going to go over them so that there's never any confusion about this. In Romans 8, I love, I'm fast making Romans my, my favorite book. It just covers so many things that we have to deal with. Let's look at verse 38. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. God's love for us, believers, we cannot fathom nor comprehend. The epitome of that love is expressed to us and shown to us. As Jesus said, greater love hath no man than to lay down his life for his friends. And so we know that Jesus exhibited the greatest love of all when he hung on Calvary for us and when he died for our sin. And the story, praise the Lord, doesn't end there. He was raised. He is risen from the dead. And in his death, burial, and resurrection, we as believers are taken through his death, burial, and resurrection, we're redeemed. Now, the seven ways that you can lose your salvation 
if we take a look at number one, that changed the meaning of eternal or everlasting. Now, I'm being serious with this. You can lose your salvation if you can do these, these seven things. And as I said, there are more. But if you can pull off these seven, well, you don't even need to look at the others. If you can manage to do these seven, you can lose your salvation. Change the meaning of eternal or everlasting. Hmm. That's a tough one. I think I started out with one of the toughest ones. Can you do that, beloved? I know I can't. I mean, I can do a lot of things, but I know I can't change the meaning of eternal or everlasting. I'm good, but I ain't that good. Number two, change the definition of never. Now, my, my scriptural reference for this is John 10.28. So let's go there and see what John 10, 28 says. Jesus is speaking. Oh, this is really nice. I love that it's written in red here in my KJV. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Oh, just for good measure, let's read verse 29. My Father, which gave them me, is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. And for good measure, verse 30, and I and my Father are one. Ooh. Hey, is Jesus declaring to be God there? Uh Uh-oh. Hmm. Yeah, he is. Well, I don't have a problem with that. Some people who are always lying on Jesus saying he never declared himself God, they need to remember John chapter 10, verse 30. But I digress. In verse 28, we see that Jesus says, I, and we already know that he's God manifested in the flesh. So this is not just some average Joe here making a declaration. The reason these words are written in red is it is, it is showing us that the very God from very God has claimed and has declared something. And he says, I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. So the first part of that verse says, He will give unto them, who is that? Those that believe on him. He's saying in verse 27, my sheep hear my voice, I know them, and they follow me. Well, they're his sheep, we're his sheep, because we're born again. So he says, I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. As I heard one preacher say, he said, you could swing out over hell with a rusty corn stalk. And your feet will never touch the flames of hell. Because Jesus is faithful that promised. God is faithful. He's the one that made an everlasting covenant with us. It cannot be broken. Not by him. We don't have the power to break it. It's eternal. So if you can change the meaning of eternal or everlasting, or change the meaning or definition of never, you're on your way to losing your salvation. Number three, unseal yourself from the seal of the Holy Spirit. Man, that's a... That's a pretty good one. That's a steep. Yeah, that's a tall order too. How do you do that? Hmm. The Bible says that we are sealed by the Holy Spirit until the day of redemption. So the number three way 
of number seven, three out of seven, number three, the way to lose your salvation is to figure out how to unseal yourself from the Holy Spirit of the Most High God. I think it will take you all of eternity to, to, to work that out, and you still won't work it out. Number four, be unborn again. Now, you can die after you're born. Now, I'm not talking about born again. I'm just talking about when a person's born, you can die. But you can never, ever be unborn. Once you're born, you are born. Can't be undone. Well, it's no different with God. Once you were born, you can never be unborn. When you're born again and you're born into the kingdom of God, there is no way to undo that. So if you can figure that one out, you can lose your salvation. Number five, exceed Jesus' insurmountable grace. Hmm. We know that in Romans, the Bible says that where sin did abound, grace does much more abound. In one of my last videos, we looked at the definition of abound, and it just means it always, wherever the line is for sin, grace leaps over that. It exceeds it by an immeasurable measure, <laughs> if I can and use that term. It exceeds it in a way that you and I could never measure. How about that? It will always win. This is the simplest way to put it. Grace will always overcome Swallow up sin. So if you can do number five, if you can exceed Jesus' insurmountable grace, congratulations, you found a way to lose your salvation. That reminds me when I was a little girl, my uncle, when he was going to college, he took some fun philosophy courses, and I really wish he hadn't because he'd come over and he'd ask questions like, you know, if a tree falls in the forest and there's no one around to hear it, does it make a sound? And I'd look at him like, you know, who cares if no one's there to hear it? But there was one he used to ask me, and it used to puzzle me. It really did. It just stuck with me through the years. And God finally gave me the answer to it, but he, he would ask this question. He would say, well, what happens when an irresistible force meets an immovable object? <laughs> yeah, I know. This is a little brain twisters, right? And I was thinking about all the kids, probably like 12 or 13 when he asked me that. And I, I just, you know, you do a kid, well, then the irresistible force is going to move it. Well, then it's not an immovable object. Okay, well, then it doesn't move. Then it's not an irresistible force. <laughs> so one day I'm just going down the road somewhere, and I think the Holy Spirit just dropped it down in my spirit. I got an answer for that question. And I was like, okay, God, what is it? So what happens when an irresistible Force meets an immovable object. That was the question my uncle asked me years ago. And the Holy Spirit said, you say, hello, Jesus. <laughs> he is the irresistible force, and he is the immovable object all at the same time. Because when God wants you, there is no force that's going to be able to resist him. And if he says you ain't moving and it ain't happening, there ain't a force in this world powerful enough to move. Now, that's the truth. Number six, 
of the seven ways to lose your salvation. Kick yourself out of heaven or remove yourself from heaven. The Bible says that when we're born again, we are seated in heavenly places. And when we are born again, we are translated into the kingdom of his dear son. I think I've pointed this one out before. How do you throw yourself out of heaven? Who does it? Where's well, the scripture that says the angels pick you up and toss you out? Nowhere. How do you remove yourself from heaven? It's not possible. We've been placed there. Under the power of the Holy Spirit, we've been translated by the power of God. See, you have to go against God on all of these things, and our arms are too short to box with God. I mean, the last time I checked, whatever way he says it's going to be, that's how it's going to be. You know, getting back to that irresistible force. (laughs) And number seven. Of the seven ways to lose your salvation, change the definition of to telestize, which means paid in full. Now, in this world, if you get out of debt, you can go right back out there and jump and go into debt. But that's not possible in God's economy. When he pays your debt in full, it was paid with an insurmountable, let's use that word again, amount. An unfathomable amount paid that debt. It was so much more that was necessary to settle that debt. That even if you spent your whole life, every day, multiplying it to infinity, trying to accumulate more debt, it has already been paid. That's what that meant, paid in full. Remember, you and I were not even a gleam in our daddy's eye, as the saying goes, when Jesus hung on Calvary. We hadn't lived one moment. We hadn't committed one sin. And yet, for every person who will receive the gift of pardon, all of your sin has been paid for to infinity. So if you can figure out a way to undo that work, congratulations, you found a way to lose your salvation. And as I said, there are others that I could mention. But I want to keep this succinct and short and sweet because I want people who really think that you can lose your salvation to examine it from another perspective and to see, remember I said we need to take the focus off of us and put it where it belongs on Jesus. And this is why we call his grace amazing. Remember, the biblical definition of grace, God's unmerited favor to hell-deserving sinners without any expectation of return on the part of the sinner. And when you look at it that way, you will see. All you can do is throw your hands up in thanks to God for what he has done for you. It is his unmerited favor. We've never done one thing to deserve it. And you cannot undo by evil works what you could never gain by good works. It has nothing to do with us and our capability or our incapability. It only has to do with what Jesus has done for us. And when we believe on him in faith, we are placed in right standing with God. And that is when the immovable, for, excuse me, the immovable object has placed us there. We cannot be moved. 
because God has placed us there, and he's not going to remove us. He is faithful, that promise, and his promises are eternal. Once it's done in God, it's done. Jesus declared, on Calvary it is finished, in John chapter 19, verse 30, paid in full. And no man can undo that work. And anybody that teaches you can lose your salvation is saying that sin is greater than Jesus, the second Adam failed, and, and that he is imperfect and he is not the very God from very God. They do not realize the blasphemy they speak. Because if they did, they would never say those words out of their mouth. I hope this has been a blessing to you. I know it's been a blessing to me to spend time just meditating on Jesus' amazing grace, how wonderful God is, what he has done for us through his son, how we can never lose our salvation because the things that you would have to do to lose your salvation cannot be done. Be blessed, beloved of the Most High God, in Jesus' name. Amen.